Sunday, July 10, 1853, at 3 o'clock p.m., the first non-Roman Catholic Christian service was celebrated in the community of San Diego. It was also the first Episcopal service on record in Southern California. And let's just say that in the beginning, things were not easy for the first Episcopal clergy person in San Diego. The Reverend John Reynolds and the faithful of San Diego struggled. The Herald, San Diego's first newspaper, gave a vivid description of early Episcopal worship. The quiet due to Sunday is broken in upon by the rioting of the inebriated, and the very words of the Holy Writ are drowned by the clicking of billiard balls and the calls for cocktails from the adjacent saloon. It was here, at this courthouse, where Episcopal worship was first held in Southern California. In 1854, Franklin Pierce was president of the United States, the railroad industry was booming, Elisha Otis debuted his safety elevator at the World's Fair, and the first shot of the Civil War was still seven years away. And in New York, the General Convention of the Episcopal Church decided that California needed a bishop. William Ingram Kipp was appointed the first bishop of California. He traveled by ship from New York to his new diocesan home in San Francisco. During the journey north, one of the two paddle wheels of the mighty steamer snapped, causing the ship to limp towards San Diego. After taking on supplies, the steamer left the safety of the bay, and it was not long before a terrific storm stirred the seas and ran the ship aground off the coast of Point Loma. Shipwrecked and without a place to stay, the new bishop and his family were given hospitality by the Bandini family, leading citizens in the area. Local Episcopalians requested that the new bishop hold services, and so, on Sunday, January 22, 1854, Bishop William Ingram Kipp celebrated his first Eucharist in his new diocese from a dusty little courtroom in Old Town, San Diego. 120 years after the first Southern California Episcopalians came together in worship, the Diocese of San Diego was born. On December 7, 1973, the Episcopal Diocese of San Diego called its founding diocesan convention to order. The Reverend Atwell Stewart, who served on the committee to define the borders of EDSD, said, We agree that San Diego and Imperial counties would be in the new diocese, but some areas had to vote on joining or not. In the end, the Coachella Valley and areas of Riverside County voted to join the diocese, and San Clemente decided to remain in the Diocese of Los Angeles. Shortly after EDSD became a diocese, in 1974, 11 women were ordained in Philadelphia, and in 1976, General Convention voted to allow the ordination of women. But it wasn't until 1982 that Patricia Bush became the first woman ordained in the Episcopal Diocese of San Diego. At the time, only nine women clergy members served our diocese out of 130 total clergy. Since then, the ministry of ordained women has flourished with 46 active women deacons, priests, and oh yes, the first woman diocesan bishop in San Diego. The early days of the diocese were considered a renewal period. With fresh energy and vitality, the people of EDSD sought out new ministry areas to serve. As the Vietnam War was still in full swing, the Reverend Bill Mahidi, a local priest, took to the streets serving Vietnam vets. Working closely with Veterans Village, a program that connects veterans experiencing homelessness with services, care, and compassion, Reverend Mahidi was not shy about his distaste for war. He said, Anybody who has been involved in the Vietnam War and who has dealt with Vietnam veterans is at best a realist. The rose-colored glasses get thrown away pretty quickly in this business. Meanwhile, in the northeastern region of the diocese, in Palm Desert, St. Margaret's Episcopal Church served as a spiritual sanctuary for President Gerald Ford and his wife Betty. After moving to the area in 1977, the Fords deeply integrated themselves into the Coachella community during their post-White House lives. St. Margaret's played a pivotal role during significant moments for the Fords, such as the private prayer service held after President Ford's passing. There was no military flyover, no cannons, salutes, or bugles, and no honorary pallbearers, highlighting the church's sacred importance to the family, even while mourning. Deliver your servant Gerald, O Sovereign Lord Christ, from all evil. Set him free from every bond, that he may rest with all your saints in the eternal habitations, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign one God forever and ever. Amen. St. Margaret's embodies the spiritual and communal values that the Fords cherished. As the 1970s came to a close, on the other side of the world, in Iraq and Iran, things were reaching a boiling point. 
Thousands of Chaldean refugees began resettling in the El Cajon Valley, fleeing the war and religious persecution. St. Albans Episcopal Church in El Cajon was there to welcome them. Throughout St. Albans' long history, it has continued to serve refugees of all backgrounds. Today, St. Albans Interfaith Ministry named Welcome Ministries provides a local community garden, laundry ministry, feeding programs, and more. Episcopalians continue to serve El Cajon. By San Diego's Seventh Diocesan Convention, the Reverend Juan Acosta was assigned as the first Hispanic missioner in our diocese. Reverend Acosta sought to educate every congregation about becoming a more open and diverse community. Three years later, Reverend Acosta also took the role of priest in charge at St. Matthew's in National City, the largest Spanish-speaking congregation at the time. Reverend Acosta served as the Hispanic missioner for 16 years. His ministry is remembered as prolific and pioneering. He was instrumental in building up several Spanish and bilingual congregations like St. Matthew's National City, St. Mary's Imperial Beach, St. John's Indio, and Santa Rosa del Mar Desert Shores.